Today we're taking a look at the Squamo 2501. This is Fan from Geometric Future. Let's get right into it. So first and foremost, the primary feature about this fan and a lot of Geometric Futures fans is that they use this golf ball pattern. And if you don't know, the reason golf balls can actually travel so far is that those little dimples trip the air to turbulent rather than uh, a streamlined uh, laminar type flow. And the reason this helps is it actually reduces the vortice behind the ball, allowing it to be essentially more aerodynamic in that shape, as opposed to an airplane wing, which is fundamentally aerodynamic. Tripping it to turbulent helps create a similar type effect, which is why a lot of actually modern cars do a very similar feature. So the science is there for the reasoning behind it, and we're going to take a look at this uh, design actually does anything to actually help it or if it just creates more noise and that kind of thing. Unfortunately, I can't create a simulation model to compare a smooth version versus a dimpled version, but let's check out the data for this fan. So first up is my case simulation test. The case simulation test uh, for you, the user, can be used in basically one major way. What size case do you actually plan on buying? Well, I took four key locations that are representative of different size case categories. First is the six inch mark. This is representative of a short throw distance, meaning if you put fans out the bottom of your case and you're blowing the air up into your GPU, that'd be that short throw distance. The six inch mark is also representative of a small ITX style case. Now, uh, I wanna make one thing clear. This is an ITX case that is still a front to back airflow type design. That is a probably a GPU length of under six inches. So again, relatively small uh, overall speaking. So front to back airflow, not the ultra compact ones like the Fractal uh, Terra or uh, other really small uh, ITX or small form factor case designs. The nine inch mark right here is representative of compact powers. I think of the Dell Optiplexes, but essentially it would be able to hold a full size uh, ATX motherboard in terms of length. So probably an MATX case, shorter in height, um, and a shorter GPU, the GPU would be about the length of that motherboard. So you'd be looking at that front to back airflow again, air cooler type design. Then we have the 11 inch mark. The 11 inch mark is representative of your mid tower, something like a Corsair 5D, Corsair 5000D, or other kind of mid towers. The Meshify 2C would be in there. And then we have the 14.5 inch mark. This is representative of large towers. Something like the Frack Design Torrent fits into that 14.5 inch mark. So when you're taking a look at um, what, side of, what kind of fan you actually want to buy, you want to first determine what size case you're gonna be putting these fans into. But let's see how it compares against my control fan. So this T line is my control. It is three parts A12 S25 to one part A14. In general, 140 millimeter class fans tend to do better at the 11 and 14.5 inch mark while 120s tend to do better at the 6 and 9 inch mark. There are exceptions to the rule, but in general, uh, this is the case. And I blended those two fans together, uh, normalizing them, because I wanted to get the best mix of both worlds. So it's not the peak at the 6 inch mark, it's not the peak at the 14.5, but it gets a good generalized performance mark. And so fans that are over it would be considered very good. Fans that are underneath it would be considered um, not as good. So... How do these fans look? Well, the two Suomas start off near on identical, and we do see that they have very similar RPMs. So that's very interesting. But we do see that the Suoma 2503, which is a more expensive fan, uh, does significantly better across a broader distance range, so farther away from the fan. While the 2501, which is their entry level model, tends to do worse, but they end up at the same place. So I'm going to say that these two fans are not optimized for blowing air a long distance. At 100% PW fan signaling, we have the RPMs once again and the noise level generated. So the Squama 2503 was quieter for approximately the same level of performance, while the 2501 is noisier for that performance, but both these two fans are underperforming compared to my control fan. So once again, I would lead me to not recommend them for case airflow. So how do they compare against other fans that I've tested? Well, so right here, this purple line is the Squama 2503. So it at compact tower size would actually still be okay, 
but then it drops off very steeply and so I wouldn't use it in anything bigger than a compact tower. Now, as for the Skama 2501, it is among the worst case airflow fans that I've tested. This is the NFS-12A, and it's right at the bottom. Of course, there's one that's even worse than that, and that is the Storm. So let's move on. Let's take a look at 100%. How does it look? Well, here's the 2501. It's, it's at the bottom. So no, it does not get a recommendation as a case airflow fan. As for the Squama 2503, it's sitting right here, still well below the bottom, right at the bottom of the pack, but it's in a better position, and both of them should be completely ignored at anything larger than a compact tower. How about noise performance? First, a key note about noise performance. I took the measurements at the 9-inch mark, and, and this would be a good time for me to talk about future plans for this channel. So right now with this channel, uh, this isn't me being better, but it's like I'm stuck. Um, in order to get better testing equipment, I, I need assistance. I need help. Uh, you, the viewers, can uh, join me on Patreon. I am now a YouTube uh, whatever member. You can send me supers, can send, um, what do they call it, join the membership program, that kind of stuff. All any Anything you want to help me with. We'll go directly into buying that better testing equipment to get me further down the line to give you the best fan data that I can possibly generate. Uh, right now I'm looking at about $2,000 worth of equipment. Whether or not you decide to contribute, I'll keep making videos the way I've been making them, doing the best that I can with the equipment that I've got, but I want to get real with you for a moment because, well, I feel like it's my due diligence to get real with all of you. So um, back to the regular schedule program. And it's pretty clear that the Squama 2501 is, I, I, I don't want to use profanity, so let's say pretty piss poor because it gets pretty much no improvement in airspeed for such a long distance until it's upper RPMs where it finally gains airspeed. But it's already so noisy at that point, relatively speaking, that it's just not even worth considering. The Squama 2503 starts off in an okay position compared to the other fans and but it's just too flat a line it also has one harmonic at it in its upper rpm range so uh take that for what you will uh but it is just too flat and ends up being a pretty poor performing fan as well so kind of case in point not very good case fans so let's jump to the next section 100 percent So while recording the uh, Squama 2501B, right here, I feel air pushing out towards me. So I'm not really sure why, but something about the jump, I don't feel anything from the top really, unless I'm like right there, but I do feel air being pushed out from the sides. And a, not much over here, but really a lot right here on this side. So something weird is about the geometry with this fan and it's just spewing air out to the side. How about as, in, as a cooler fan, so hooking up to a radiator or CPU cooler? Now, my cooler for testing is the Noctua U12A. It has a fairly fight, tight fin spacing, and it's a fairly thick um, heat sink for over the CPU, so that it gets kind of a halfway in between a, radi a good, uh, tightly packed radiator and an air cooler, uh, giving a good idea of how fans perform in that pressure-optimized scenario. So we've got two graphs here set up very similarly. In both the two graphs, the upper left are going to be better performing fans. Bottom right are going to be worse performing fans. And uh, let's start on the left side. Well, this is RPM versus airspeed. Once again, we have my control fan, three parts A12X5 to one part A14. And this RPM versus airspeed is fundamentally a blade efficiency graph. It is how good is this particular blade design at shoving air through the CPU air cooler. And we do see small performance differences here. So the control fan is sitting right here. And at uh, mid and higher RPMs, so 20, 30, 40, let's say 50% RPM and higher, they are better than my control fan blend. So that is an impressive result. 
Um, and we do see that the 2501, amazingly enough, is slightly outperforming the Squama 2503, the more expensive version. So kind of go figure there. Uh, I will like to note I did like the appearance of the 2503. Just going to say that out loud and the way the RGB looked on it. But um, appearance aside, let's move on to noise versus airspeed. So this is a efficiency graph in terms of how much noise does it generate for that given airspeed. And well, this is where they're not doing so good. They are pretty noisy, especially compared to this control fan. So do you like the way they look? Do you like the way they look enough to counteract how much noise they generate? That is an answer that you have to decide for yourself. Now, in terms of how they rank in terms of other fans, if let's say you have the Squama 2501B, it's moving this much air on my cooler, but it would be in this position, it would be performing this much. And let's say you upgraded to the ANF A12X25. Well, it's now going to be pushing significantly more air for the same noise level. So thus, if your CPU is unlocked, you're going to be able to draw higher wattage. If your CPU is locked, you're going to have cooler temperatures. Or you can back off that PWM fan signal, and now your system is even quieter for the same original wattage. So it's your choice how you want to use that, but it shows you how they're ranked, how they're stacked on top of each other. So now, in terms of maximum performance. Well, I apologize. I found an error on my graph. So I had to draw in the line. Excel on my computer. This is a different computer for the presentation. has a different version of Excel than the one that was created with it. So it was misbehaving. But it was at 2 meters per second, which is significantly... Which is actually in line with other fans. So its performance is there. But its overall noise value is pretty significantly louder like it's actually as noisy as like a couple 3000 rpm fans so uh, noise may be a problem with this fan and in terms of how the noise graph looks well it is still pretty flat and the squama 2503 is also pretty flat so both of them are well unfortunately noisy for the amount of performance that they deliver so yuck Next, we're taking a look at CFM, CFM testing. Uh, as a lot of other reviewers do it, is my least favorite kind of test because it is fundamentally flawed the way they do it. So CFM testing can be used very scientifically to make your own atom wind tunnels, PQ curves, anything like that, very valid in those circumstances. But it cannot be used verbatim as this thing good for case airflow because high CFM. Now that all that is out of the way, these graphs, just like the... Um, CPU graph, better fans are in the top left, worse sand in the bottom right, and we have the RPM versus CFM, so blade efficiency graph, and they are lined up very closely with the control fan with the Squama 2501 outperforming the other two by a little bit. Next we have noise versus CFM, and they are both abysmal, so let's just move on. How do they rank? Well, in noise normalized results, they are well towards the bottom of the graphs, so not a great position overall. You see better fans towards the top here, like the A12X25. Next, how do they do in terms of 100% uh, PWM fan signaling? You'll notice I had to implement my little bar graph correction. It may not be aligned up quite correctly, but the value here is correct. So it is in line with like the Unifan SL Infinity 120. That is not a bad result, but you'll notice that its noise value is significantly louder than it. The 2503, on the other hand, is on the lower side. It's a bit underwhelming. Its noise value is also pretty loud. Um, so how about noise versus performance? Well, it's they're bad. The other fans listed on here would be considered relatively good. So they're bad. Let's just move on. All right, now we're on to value proposition. The Squama 2501 is a $13 fan and the 2503 is a $20 fan. Both of them, as I found them, came in three packs. So just multiply that value by three and you'll get the total price of the package. So uh, it is expensive up front, but you get three fans, just saying. And value proposition is a real simple calculation. It's performance per dollar. Uh, if you're on an ultra tight budget, well, that's when you'd pay special attention to this value proposition and you get the best bang for the buck possible. So how do the Squamous rank? 
Well, they're relatively inexpensive because of that triple pack uh, per fan. But if you only needed one fan, it's a pretty terrible choice because, you, again, you have to buy a triple pack. But if you do need three fans, their value proposition, spe specifically for the 25 is actually pretty good uh, for the 6-inch mark at 100%. It's actually quite very good. The 2503 is kind of middle of the road here. At the 11-inch mark, though, uh, noise normalized, barely even in the middle of the pack. At uh, the 11-inch mark, 100%, uh, technically middle of the pack, but you'll notice the outliers, the best fans, are way, way better than it. So, uh, okay 6-inch, not great 11-inch. How about for CFM testing? Well, um, kind of okay. Their their value is actually okay. Uh, their true performance wasn't. Well, I guess at 100% it was fine. Uh, but, you know, this is where, you know, value proposition kind of comes in. And uh, for the CPU air cooler, well, again, their value proposition is actually okay for the 2501B. The 2503 is fine. It's middle of the pack. But the 2501 is quite good. So, and of course, at the end of every video, I do like to show off my raw data. This data does belong to me. Uh, I'm the one who generated it. It takes about one and a half to two hours to generate this level of accuracy and uh, detail of data. Um, if you want to use it for your own personal use, i.e. meaning you want to put it into Excel and run your own calculations because, hey, you like doing calculations, you are more than welcome to do so. However, if you want to use it in any sort of publication, written journal, video, or create a reaction video to my video, I do ask that you contact me and reference me uh, first and foremost because I worked long and hard to um, well, generate this data. If you've got suggestions for, for ways I can improve my videos to make them more enjoyable to watch, please leave them those in the comment section down below. I always am trying to improve my video uh, creation process. And if you've got uh, suggestions for other fans for me to take a look at that I haven't looked at yet, please leave those in the comment section down below. I do try to acquire fans for ease of um, access. I do ask they be available on Amazon in the United States because that's where I live. Um, other than that, thank you very much for watching and getting this far in my video. Please uh, think about joining me as a member on YouTube or uh, joining me on Patreon, whichever one you feel most comfortable with. And um, hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much. Have a great day. And I hope to see you next time here on Computer Tech and More.